Well, hello there, everybody. It's me here once again, the Nine Host, as usual, here to bring you a review of Knights and Pen and Paper Plus One Edition. It is an indie RPG developed game, whatever, by Behold Studios, which you can find over at beholdstudios.com.br, which I'll provide a link to in the description below, and has been published by Paradox Interactive, which has brought, you know, you know, published games of Magicka, Mount Blade Warband, uh, Crusader Kings, War of the Vikings, etc., etc., uh, you know, that kind of stuff. So, video game review, first things we always gotta do, what are the options? How can we customize this, our experience? Um, obviously, you can't really mess around the graphical settings at all, because, you know, this entire game is, you know, it's meant to be 8-bit, same with the audio, it's, it's supposed to be like that Whoa, old oh, retro D and D feel. Then you know, also like, you know, like '90s, the '90s and '80s of all the cool little pixels and stuff. Anyway, so all we can really adjust is the music and the audio, which is basically the chirp chirps when NPCs talk. Uh, it supports English, Portuguese, uh, Italian. But yeah, that's Spanish and German. So if you don't speak one of those five languages, I'm sorry. You're kind of out of luck. Um, you can also, if you get the deluxe edition, I presume you get a promo code that you would redeem there. I obviously I didn't get a deluxe edition. I got the best standard edition. So yeah, um, you can though change the graphical settings of this game. Uh, I want you only though once you boot it up, uh, because once you you know boot up the game, it's like hey no, you can't go messing with that stuff. So it's kind of like Skyrim. But the way it does its mods, like you have to enable them before you boot up the game. Um, it's a lot simpler than it sounds. I hope you understand what I what I'm trying to mean here. Anyway, so uh, before we actually get into the gameplay, I'm going to show you. Uh, I want to say maybe not a core function, but I, it's a nice feel to the game. Uh, as you play the game, you'll kill monsters and you get coins, right? You know, you're adventurers. You kill shit, you get money, you get loot, you know that kind of stuff. You can spend these coins in your shop to buy like buffs, like snacks and stuff. Although they're temporary, same with drinks, you know, it's like, oh, uh, plus an initiative in battles, duration of 15 minutes. Um, or, or like permanent objects, like, uh, Burger King crown. Yeah, I can fight seven monsters in a battle instead of, like, five, you know? Or loaded dice, which I don't have a plus one to all dice rolls. And they vary, and you can basically customize everything in your little back room here, to your table, uh, to your dungeon master. The entrance you even get in here, books, the things, and your pet, you know, our lovable dragon, quote unquote, igloo pet. Uh, inside reference for me and my friends, but you know, so you might, you guys might get on the uh, the uh, group circle here and learn who igloo is, the adorable little bastard he is. Anyway, that's basically settings. Uh, if you don't want to be like, oh, I don't want to grind for money, uh, you want to now, you can uh, hit the big plus button and then like you make a little microtransaction to get like a bunch of money. Obviously. Personally, I'm not a fan of that, because it's like, you know, you already bought this game, it's like $15 on Steam or something, but it's like, so I don't feel like there should be, but it's optional, alright? Like, you can always farm it, but it's, I don't know. I'm one of those gamers who are like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna spend money to get things, eh. But hey, if you don't have the time and you wanna get the really nice cosmetic thing, because I'll be honest, they do make a difference in combat. If, if you don't want to grind and stuff, you can just always buy the gold. And this gold is also spent more on this, that kind of stuff. So let's load a game up. And, well, let's go to my super duper game. So, it's a progress of the game. Uh, you'll get, you know, characters you can play with. Like, here, here's my paladin, right? He's a werewolf guy, and each kind of cla uh, character has his own little special passive. Like, the Wolverine dude, he heals health every turn. Uh, my magic. I mean, not my magic. Oh! My alien guy, he gets mana every turn. Uh, I have a hunter who's like, woo, and he's a hipster, so he does more damage range, like damage range, stuff like that. Like, you can basically customize uh, characters very, very well. There are characters who are better than each other, but there are characters you have to unlock uh, through being like the game developers, because you can then get them as characters. Um, there's even, you know, special classes you have to unlock, like the bard and hunter. Uh, but other than that, uh, Pretty basic, like there's their traditional um, RPG classes. Uh, there's a nice little overworld map that we can go to. Cost some money to uh, travel though. Like I'm not. It's like, eh. I understand that, but like, you know, I'm just, like not exactly happy. It's, like I don't want to spend money to go traveling around and stuff. But uh, I'm gonna go to town real fast. Let's go to Sunset Castle. And as we travel, worlds of dice. So you know, will we be ambushed? 
many months since he had just barely made it at that time. So, woo! I gotta go make it easy. Anyway, so you can go to like a tavern and stuff and swap out some characters, right? Like, I have the, a pizza guy knight uh, who's, you know, sitting in the background simply because I don't feel like, uh, um, uh, what's the word? Having him in the party at the moment. So, like, if I want to bring in a new character, I can do this at any time for 250 gold. It's very cheap, though, uh, when you only have, like, a couple members, so you aren't just, like, completely overwhelmed at the start. But, uh, you know, we can have warrior, rogue, druid, barbarian, shaman, necromancer, and those are all, all the other ones I don't have, because you can't have two because of classes. But there's a wide variety of characters. Like Mr. John, to, like, your, to, like, one of the develop developers, Rolando, and stuff. Um, we even got, like, Grandma, you know? So let's have Grandma in here. Let's have her tank, you know? Let's look at that, you know, taunt. Or you're a teacher. Or whatever, like, good choice of characters, and they do have interesting info and things they say time to time during the main story and other quests like that, like, uh, so you can also spend your money, uh, trying to craft things, although it's very much a, alright, am I gonna get this, am I not, like, it's very much a risky type thing, like, if I wanna make that, oh, I don't even have I don't even have money to show you an example. But basically, it's like, let's say I wanted to make my paladin guy a better hammer, right? It'd be like a certain percentage chance. Oh, right there at the top. Sorry, I am blind. Just like, all right, I can spend $155 in trying to get permanent better gear for my guy. But there's also a chance, you know, it will fail. I'll lose my money, and so you have to grind it out again. This is a very grindy game, but it's a lot of fun to say Like, you can go to shop and sell, like, whatever items you aren't using. Like, uh, huh. Let me just look at some of my uh, Wolfie guys. I'm like, he has like, you know, generic trinkets and stuff, and you'll get more in battle, right? Whatever you don't need, use, you can always just, you know, sell. Like, there's even a convenient little thing here, you can strike them on. It's like, alright, yeah, sell. Uh, sell. Uh, sell. You know, get money. So you don't necessarily have to be fighting all the time, but it's you know, probably a good idea. And, um, well, let's just go to, let's go back to the, like, forest. Probably get really injured. Uh, and do a quick quest so you can see some of the actual gameplay elements of it. And obviously, um, different, uh, areas have different monsters. Like, here, I'm finding, like, level 23s, like, dire wolves, dryads, and that kind of stuff. So, let's fight, like, some snow bears, yeah? Yeah. Let's, we'll fight seven snow bears. And probably get completely destroyed. All right. Oh, what did I have? Oh, I completely forgot how how I play this game. So I'm just gonna like attack that bear. Ooh. Oh. Oh, what do what do? I think I do that. Yes, yeah. But um, it's very much a D and D esque thing. Every time you level up, you'll you can choose your characters to get new skills and stuff. Like, he's like, my cleric's like, alright, gotta heal these guys. And you can specialize them to very specific things. I mean, like, this guy is crap fireball, crap freeze attack. And re but really good meteor mana regen, because this guy's like, alright, I'm gonna AoE you all to death. So it's like, woo, speak gold bez, summon down meteors, and stuff like that. That's a Final Fantasy reference if you didn't get it. And then a ranger, he's like, uh, yo, let's just have bullseye so we can have a ridiculous amount of critical chance. Like, look at that! 83% critical strike chance. That's ridiculous. He's like, bam, sniping you all day. My bard, you know, he's all about like buffing your heroes and stuff. Uh, like paracord. I have this guy just be like, all right, make everyone super steroid strong. My a wolf guy, he's like, all right, I gotta like become beefy as possible and get more threat so I get hurt more instead of the other guys. Oh, uh, cleric obviously heals something. You know, that's my generic party, but you know. You can have your own party, like, you can have a necromancer, and you can be like, alright, I'm gonna do necromancy stuff, I can't, I've never used a necromancer, so I can't really say, but, that's the gist of this game. It's very much a, well, old generic D&D battle, but only on your computer, then maximum five players that you can also modify, like, get more powerful by having, like, buying stuff in store, stuff like that, like, it, it's not that, I guess, detailed of a game. It's very repetitious, but if you enjoy the classics and, you know, some old Retroid... I mean, not Retroid. Bleh! 
retro video game fun. Well, not video game, but like classic tabletop games at all, really fun. Like you know, you let's say you want to have like a ding ding counter, right? But you know, you don't have it. You don't have a like a Dungeon Dragons group, which is unfortunate because Dungeon Dragons is amazing. But that's not the point. You can always you know boot up this game and be like, all right, I'm gonna do some quests here, help these people. There's tons of tons and tons of side quests. Uh, that's how you mainly get your new characters and uh, classes. Um, I actually haven't completed the main story, but from what I've heard from my friends who have been, it's a complete blast. There are references to all sorts of things that you'll enjoy. Like, there's, like, there's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reference somewhere in here. I think it's in the first optional dungeon you can get, uh, get into. And just basically everything... In, like, this game is basically one giant homage to your childhood and everything you held dear. Like, if you're like a 90s kid or 80s kid or whatever, basically if you're like around 20 years or older, you will enjoy this because there's so many throwbacks to the past. I mean, look, I have Master Splinter as my dungeon master. That's awesome! You can even meet the, you know, actual turtles, although they're totally asshole boss. I don't know why I was saying I don't remember me them because I just remembered that was a terrible boss battle and I completely regret it. But dicks. Don't let this don't trust those damn turtles. But um it's honestly it's a lot more fun than it looks is what I'm trying to say. But it's very much a game that you don't play for the gameplay, you play because it's like a satire of I guess of old days that were a lot more fun. It's hard to explain, but it's like it's just, it's a game you play for the experience. So you can say, yes, I've played this game, and you feel like a kid again. Like, it feels like it's, you're back in that nice age old, old time, and it's like, woo. See, like, I just whooped their butts, get a whole bunch of EXP, you get more EXP for fighting big battles, gold, and all that jazz. It's like, woo! You know, he's like, they make generic little whippy comments after every battle, and you know, that's basically it. Like, uh, I'll go try and camp heal up. But, you know, it's like, oh no, critical fail. I'm getting ambushed. Although, <laughs> I always play on the hardest, like, maximum number of bosses at a time, so. <laughs> okay, I, I don't want, it's not that, for this, just the one, it's not that hard. <laughs> as you can probably imagine, but. Yeah. Th this, is this is basically the entire, the entire game. A lot of fun. Um, if I had really had to give it like a numerical score value, I'd probably say a seven out of ten or something. Um, it's definitely a game you would probably you you ha you have to play it simply for the experience because it's a lot of fun, a lot of replayability. Because once you unlock a class or a character, you have them forever. Like I, you have to unlock the necromancer, the knight, the hunter, bard, all that jazz. And you can't have them at the start, but once you unlock them, you can restart the game with all these nice characters and classes and just be more powerful than normal you normally would, right? I was out of that. But maybe you'll get like two playthroughs out of this at most. Um, it's very much a game that you would pick up and play for the experience of playing it, not so much for the gameplay, unless you enjoy repetitious things like, like, this, like Samurai Warriors or something like that. Because there isn't that much divergence to it. But great, like, one-liners and references to age that, ages that, that have passed. Just, honestly, it's a lot of fun. It's something you play for the experience. I know I felt, I've said this, like, 50 times, but it's like... I, 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 I don't know how else to put it. Because that's mainly entirely what it is. Just an experience... And it's a beautiful experience, and I strongly recommend, well, not strongly, because if I gave it a 7 out of 10, but whatever! Knights of Pen and Paper, plus one edition, uh, available now on Steam, uh, iOS, Android, you can uh, play on your PC, Mac, or Linux, uh, $15 on Steam, I think you might be able to get it on the website, although I don't know, I, I just, you know, get it on Steam, because Steam's amazing, Psst stuff like that um i will have a more uh, detailed description about the game uh, in the description below and what other games that this uh developer 
has made and no other games that Paradox Interactive has published. So if you if you like feeling a little iffy about you know just from seeing this audio and video, uh, you can go down and see you know, what's the previous track record. What have they done before? Uh, you know, have they done good enough for you to think that this is worth trying by their previous track record? Anyway, I'm rambling. I've been the only only. <laughs> The one and only annoying host as usual. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic day. I'll see you next time.